Here's algebra one explained in just 10 minutes. First of all, what is algebra? It is the study of math symbols and the rules. What is a math symbol? It is a variable. And that is a placeholder for something we don't know. So variables can be called x, y, z, a, B, and we don't know what's inside. But what we do know is that expressions are multiple symbols and variables placed together. But what if you add an equal sign? Both sides must stay balanced. Voila! Now we have something that's called an equation because of the equal sign. And to solve equations, you would do... The goal is to isolate the variable and solve for the value. Let's go. Order of operations in reverse. Let's solve this with pride. If you see a minus sign, you add, and if it's multiply, you divide. And sometimes it is possible to have x on both sides, and what you would do in this case is to treat x as something that also has to be balanced just like the rest of the stuff in the equation. But what happens if you have two variables? It becomes a function. What is a function? You put a value in and you get the value that you put into a function is known as x and it is called an independent variable because you have control over what x equals you could pass in any value of x and the value that comes out is, is called y and y is known as the dependent variable because its value depends on what x's value is of course there could be many different letter combinations but uh, x and y are the most common on the coordinate plane the x-axis is where the independent variable is and the y-axis is where the dependent variable is the x-intercept is where the function intersects the x-axis and the y-intercept is where the the graph intersects the y-axis but you have to keep in mind that if the y is for an x is more than one you do not have a function there's an easy way to prove that a function is a function and it's called the vertical line test you graph the function you draw a vertical line if there's any two points that intersect with that vertical line you know that you do not have a function you can plug in random values of x to get their y values but what is a way that we can determine all the possible x and y values for a function it's called domain and range domain and range domain is all the x values and range is all the y's domain If you have a function that's continuous, meaning that there's no holes or gaps, here's how to find the domain and range. The leftmost points and the rightmost points are the endpoints of the domain. The highest and lowest points on the graph are the endpoints of the range. Make sure to use x values for the domain and y for the range functions that may have holes or gaps in them instead are called piecewise functions and how you would find the domain and range of those is you could plot it on a graph or you could look at all the different pieces and find out where certain values and points are left out. We're now gonna take a quick intermission and talk about our sponsor, MapleSoft. If you feel absolutely unprepared for your Algebra 1 EOC, keep listening. A huge part of the Algebra 1 EOC is related to graphing, linear functions, systems of equations, inequalities, and everything that we just covered. Practice and patterns are important to help you get a good score. Get easy graphing practice using the Maple Calculator. Open the app and click on the pencil icon. Plot any equation and a graph will appear be below it plotting the equation. Next, visit the check mark icon to see how to plot the equation, how to solve for x, and you get a table, and some even allow you to see a 3d model of your graph which is pretty fun have fun graphing by downloading both the calculator and maple learn in our description below let's now get into the main functions that you should know to succeed in algebra one the first one is called a linear function it's a straight line i'm gonna be fine i'm pretty sure y'all are familiar with the phrase miles per hour uh, hour is the independent variable and miles is the dependent variable and the relationship between these two can be represented as how steep a linear function is how do we determine the steepness of a graph it's called slope and what you do next is take the change in y divide by change in x another name for slope is rise over Linear equations always have a constant slope, and there are three different ways that you could write a linear equation. Exhibit A, slope-intercept form. Y is mx plus b, y is 
X plus B M is the slope of the line while B is the Y intercept. Y is M X plus B. Y is M X plus B. These four parts are fine to graph a line. Exhibit B. Point slope form. B equation. B equation. Lastly, here's standard form. These are all the parts of standard form. X plus B, Y equals C. A and B are the coefficients of X and Y. The slope is minus A over B. Keep in mind that you cannot have fractions and A cannot equal zero. So that wraps up three forms of linear equations. Now, what do we want to do if we want to find out where two linear functions intersect? We now have a system of if you have a calculator, just graph both equations and see where they intersect. Simple, easy, but it's good to know the other ways to do it as well. Method one is substitution. To solve an equation using substitution, you would write one variable in terms of the other. So if you have y equals x plus 5, wherever you see y, you just replace it with x plus 5, solve for x, and then plug that x back in, and then solve for y. Method two is elimination. To solve using elimination, you just eliminate one of the variables. So you line up both equations so that both coefficients and, and letters match. And then you have to try to figure out some way to cancel out one of them, solve for one of the letters, and plug it back in to solve for the other one. Before we wrap up linear functions, let's talk about linear inequalities. I mentioned that linear equations have to be equal to each other on both sides, but that's not necessarily true with an inequality. You have greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, and you basically follow what the sign says. And and here is how to graph and shade linear inequalities on a graph. If the symbol includes an equal to sign, draw a solid line. If the symbol does not have an equal to sign, draw a dash line. Now you have to shade a region of solutions. If the symbol includes a lesson to sign, Shade below the line. If the symbol includes a more than two sides, shade above the line. Here is the second main function that you have to know. We have linear functions, but what happens if we take x and we multiply it by itself? It becomes x squared, and this is the basis of a quadratic function. And unlike linear functions, these aren't lines. All of these are u-shaped, and they have an infinite domain, just like linear functions, but the range is limited because a u-shape has either a maximum point or a minimum point, depending on whether it's facing upward or downward. There are three different forms of quadratic functions, vertex standard and factored form. Each form has their own advantages and disadvantages. The vertex form helps you find the vertex, which is h comma k. For standard form, 0c is the y-intercept, and negative b over 2a is the x value of the axis of symmetry, which is where the graph splits in half. Factored form helps you find your zeros, your roots, and it's also called your x-intercepts. So how do you solve for the zeros? The first step is you could obviously graph it if you have a calculator and see where it intersects the x-axis. And obviously we cannot forget x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Another popular method is factoring. And due to the sake of time, I can't explain all the steps but the maple calculator does a pretty good job of explaining it once you put an equation in and you can check our video about factoring which I'll link right here. The last thing I'm going to cover for quadratic functions is how can we tell how many solutions a quadratic function has. It's simple. You just have to find what the discriminant is and the discriminant is basically equal to b squared minus 4ac. Here's how to make sense of it. If it's greater than zero your function has to be function I'm going to cover is called an exponential function. And what's different about this function is that you have some random number, any number as the base, and then x is your exponent. So you can plug in any value of x into that into that exponent. The domain of an exponential function is all real numbers, but notice that the range is not exactly like that because in this example, the y is slowly approaching zero, but it never reaches zero. This particular example is called a horizontal asymptote. An asymptote occurs when a graph tries to reach a certain value 
value and gets really close but never reaches it. There are horizontal, vertical, and slant asymptotes. Also make sure to remember all the rules of exponents. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped. If you like learning math through songs, definitely subscribe to our channel and check out our Patreon. And, and also don't forget to download the Maple Calculator. The link is in our description. Goodbye!